those, but you got to be very slow. There's no jerking those. Hey, hey, it has to be very slow. Gentle, please. Do you want to come up? Yeah. Is this your wife back here? No, no. Uh, okay, you guys pay attention. I'll tell you how this works real quickly, okay? All right. Here we go. You got to pay attention. Okay, this is the model of the airplane that we're in. This is a 747 100, 200, 300 series is like this in the cockpit. It has a captain, first officer, and second officer, or pilot, co-pilot, flight engineer. This is the flight engineer panel back here. This operates all of the major systems on the airplane. Pilots fly the airplane and talks on the radio to the ground, and sometimes talks to the people in the, in the back. So, if you pay attention, I'll show you how it works. On the ground, see that little handle? Move your left hand. See that? right there? You got one over here too. On the 747 you got one on each side. On most airplanes just on the left hand side for the captain. That operates a nose wheel on the, so when you're taxiing you can control the airplane on the ground. This right here is your power levers. It's like the accelerator in the car for you guys. One, two, three, four starter. For each engine. You normally use them all together. And you can adjust the power levers to move the airplane and control the speed with the power levers. You can use, on the rudder pedals, these are rudder pedals down here, and the same on either side. On the top of the rudder pedals are brakes, just like in the car. So, you know how to drive the airplane around, you can control the yeah. steering, you can control your speed, and you can use the brakes to stop the airplane. If you're at idle power and the airplane is still moving too fast, you can use the brakes to slow the airplane down. So, that's the way you do it on the ground. In the air, to control the thing, I'll just go through it basically real quickly. These are your flight instruments. They're the same on both sides. These are your engine instruments. This is number one, number two, number three, number four engine. This is your flap indicator, your landing gear selector, and your flap selector. I'll explain that to you. This is a clock. This is your airspeed indicator with a mock indicator, just like the accelerator between the uh, and the car. This particular instrument is the attitude deviation indicator or flight director's indicator. And the light blue represents the sky, the black the ground, the white line represents the horizon, the orange part represents the airplane. So when you can't see out, you can see what the airplane is doing at any time. So if you need to make an adjustment, you can do that. Sure. And this particular, all of you guys, move back a little bit so they can see. This particular yeah. instrument here is a radar altimeter that measures from the bottom of the airplane to the ground up to 2,500 feet, 15 feet on 1,500 feet on most airplanes. This is your barometric altimeter. It tells how high the airplane is above sea level. You guys back in the back. This is your primary flight instrument. This is your secondary flight instrument. This here is the only instrument that's different on both sides. That is a position indicator of, of your flight controls, and the black part here represents what is called a TCAS system or traffic alert and collision avoidance system. That sends you signals if you get a conflict in right. the air. These are your power levers, one, two, and three, four engines. And like I said, the flaps on the speed brake handle. That operates these panels on top of the wing here, from the back to the front. Right. I'm sure when you see them landing, that they pop right. up all together. All the, there's individual panels here, but sometimes they just have two big panels. Those are called spoilers or speed brakes. And the effect on that is that the top of the wing is curved, the bottom is flat, but as the airflow goes across the wing, it goes at a different speed, creating a low pressure on the bottom, I mean on the top here, and a high pressure on the bottom, and it creates lift. It's like a vacuum system almost. It just displaces the air the airplane. The more more speed you have, the higher the airplane can fly. Uh, it gives you more lift, I should say. Anyway, uh, real quickly on this, what he's got his hands on, the black part is called a yoke. The whole thing is called a control column. In the air, you can use that yoke system as a steering wheel. Aerodynamically, what happens is, if you turn it to the left, this aileron comes up, 
this one goes down, blocking some of the lift on this side gives you more lift on this side, and that's how you make it turn. And the opposite is true the other way, to the right. Now if you pull back on it, it brings the elevator up. The airflow hits that, forces the tail down, and it makes the nose go up, and that's how you make it climb, and the opposite is true the other way. Now the rudder is a little different. It's operated by these rudder pedals down here. If you were to lose an engine on one side or the other, you would have to deflect the rudder to one side or the other to compensate for it. So if you lose the power on the left side, you had power on the right side, it wants to force the nose to the left. So if you push the rudder pedal to the right, then that deflects to the right, and the airflow hits that, it forces the tail around, straightens it up, and this is your rudder trim. It has another little trim tab on top here, you can adjust it. Take your foot off the rudder, and as you're changing speed and power, you can adjust that. So 